The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. My name is Jasmine, and I am a recovering drug addict. My name is Richie Farrell, a.k.a. The Old White Junkie. And we are your hosts for Exit Team Nashua. Our mission is to bring recovery into the living room. Last year, over 72,000 Americans died of an accidental overdose. That's almost 200 Americans every single day. We will bring you guests with real life experiences with addiction and recovery. Welcome, Welcome to, to Exit, Exit Team, Team Nashua. Nashua. Welcome everybody to Exit Team Nashua. My name's Jesse. I will be your host this evening. Tonight in the studio, we have Dan Cotter with us. Welcome, Dan. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yes. Um, so yeah, um, been wanting to get you on for a little while now, and I'm glad you finally made it. So um, tell us, Dan, what brings you to the show? A little bit about you know your story, um, your experience with addiction and recovery. Yeah, so thank you, first of all, for having me. Mm -hmm. um, I, what brings me here is a struggle, right? Mm -hmm. I, um, I struggled for a long time, right? I couldn't figure it out, didn't know what to do. A um, lot of different factors, but ultimately I got to a place, mm -hmm. right, where hopeless, um, pain, misery, didn't want to live, and... Uh, made a phone call asking for help, right? That's that's the short version of it. Like that's how I got to a place where mm -hmm. in recovery, working in recovery, working with other people, mm -hmm. um, life got good, mm -hmm. life's well, right? Everything's good now, um, still do all these things, but like where, where it started was normal life. Mm -hmm. I don't, um, I don't have a, a thing if you look at my past, there's nothing you can look at and say, this is why Dan is a drug addict and an alcoholic. So tell us like a little bit about like what it looked like for you. Like you're from Massachusetts, right? Yes, yep, okay. just south of Boston. South of Boston. Um, white picket fence life growing up, right? Okay, like, so did you have brothers and sisters? Two older sisters, Okay. Uh, parents married, still married, mm -hmm. um, no trauma, no issue, no like okay. nothing like that, like I said. At no point in my childhood are you like, this is why what he happened? ended up what, like right. he did. Um, is there um, like alcoholism at all in the family? Family barely, like my immediate family mm -hmm. barely drinks. Okay. Right? Barely does, like doesn't do drugs. Mm -hmm. They weren't around. Um, a special occasions, holidays, weddings, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But there isn't. There okay. isn't anywhere. I am the one, right? Um, so... Um, older sisters like what did it look like were they like partying like you know just kind of like how we do in high school and yes. looked cool kind of thing yes so it wasn't again they were older I was the youngest mm -hmm. um you know high school stuff normal like whatever you define as normal right for me it was you drink in high school right mm -hmm. you party mm -hmm. um they did to to my knowledge um we didn't like hang out right per se but they did college one of them went to college i know they did uh, as well it's not like they don't drink now right um were they ever close to the extent i was no um do they take it or leave it yes mm -hmm. they are normal mm -hmm. drinkers right they drink they have a few every now and then have a night out stuff like that uh they they just seemed with or without alcohol to kind of have their life uh, um under control, I guess, but on the outside, mine was under control growing up, right? On the outside, everything looked the part, right? Good grades, good kid, sports, like you would not think anything. Mm -hmm. It was just like a ball of fear and insecurity. Okay. Right? That's, that's all I was. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was, a, I was a punk, right? Like I, I enjoyed being bad or like getting away with stuff. I did, mm -hmm. whether that was a little lie, whether that was like, um, stealing something from like a school store, right? Mm -hmm. Sneaking out, telling your mom you're going here, but go here, right? Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so eighth grade was my first consequences, right? So in eighth grade, I try and buy a bag of grass, right? Mm -hmm. And I get caught 
and I get suspended for 55 days. What? That's right? a long time. Yeah. So suspended for 55 days? 55 days. My life got significantly better. So here's where, like I was raised morals, mm -hmm. right? Standards, be polite, how to treat people. But once this happened, that line got pushed out. Like, don't do this stuff. Don't cross this line. Mm -hmm. And I started smoking weed. I liked it. So now that line is out more. Then it's like I'm doing it in school, out mm -hmm. more. Then I get caught. And nothing really happened, right. right? I got in trouble, yeah. I had my schoolwork got sent home, things like that, but nothing really happened, right. right? I just went on. I would be at home drinking my parents' booze with my best friend that I got suspended with, mm -hmm. right? Nothing happened. And then you go to high school, right? Like literally, there was, I missed school, I got grounded for a while, but. So let me ask you this. When you first started, um, did you have like that like aha moment with like alcohol or, or not, weed? Like, oh my God, this is the feeling I always want to have. Not alcohol or weed. It was more like, I want to hang out with these people. This is what they're doing. Okay. That was more of it, right? Or I was already hanging out with them. They were doing it. And so I, it was like accepting. I want to be cool. Yeah. Right? That's, okay. I liked it. Don't get me wrong. But but it wasn't like, this no, is the answer to all my no, prayers. No, it wasn't. Right. It was fun. I enjoyed it. Right. Um, I did it for a long time. All that. Same thing with drinking. Mm -hmm. Um. So I get to high school mm -hmm. and it's like nothing happened, right? Drinking, smoking weed, playing sports, good grades, good kid, same thing. Everything right. on the outside. On the inside, I'm fake. I'm a liar. Mm -hmm. I want you to like me. I want them to like me. I'm just a different person to everybody. What I think you like, mm -hmm. I'll be. Mm -hmm. I have no identity, mm -hmm. right? I'm having fun. I have friends, all that. But my life is like, it's just a hamster on a wheel. Mm -hmm. Whether I'm alone or with a million people, I'm like in here. Just like, it, it's hard to... At the moment, no, but mm -hmm. now looking back, it was it was a nightmare. Right? Mm -hmm. I never wanted to be alone. Mm -hmm. I always thought people were talking about me. Mm -hmm. um, and again, but you get me like on a basketball court or a soccer field, I'm fine in mm -hmm. between those lines, right? Get out of it, now, like, cause I can be present with that stuff. That stuff got me out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so high school, same thing, right? Didn't really get in trouble in high school. Mm -hmm. Could have, did a lot of stupid stuff, right? Didn't get in trouble. Um, got a lot of like, be more like your sister, mm -hmm. those kind of things, which sucked. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I pretended I didn't care. So high school ends. Now I'm, there, there wasn't a drug put in front of me I didn't do, I didn't try, I didn't like. Everything I did and tried, I liked. So it progressed, right? Mm -hmm. That word, progression. It's like, start, try this, like it, keep mm -hmm. doing it. Try this, like it, mix them, like it. So. Mm -hmm. It wasn't necessarily that I was immediately hooked on something physically, drug addiction, ran my life, tore everything down. Right. But any opportunity I had to do it, I would do it. Mm -hmm. Didn't matter. Mm -hmm. And I looked forward to those, mm -hmm. right? The weekends, the mm -hmm. nights, all that. So college, I go to college. Can right? I ask where you went to college? Springfield College. Okay. So I play soccer there. I live there. Freedom. And this was just... I like did whatever I wanted, right? Mm -hmm. I had fun. I did enough to get by school-wise. Mm -hmm. I didn't care about learning anything. I was there to play a sport and have fun. Mm -hmm. That was it. And that's what I did. More drugs come into play, more experience. And now it's the amount is more now, right? Mm -hmm. So now instead of just like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, now it's just like whenever, right? right. Tuesday dollar drafts, this, yeah. that. So there's always a reason, always something, always somebody. So that's what I'm doing, right? So again, college, no real consequences, right? I got suspended for one game in my four years because... You played at soccer all four years. Yeah, one game because I was out drinking within mm -hmm. 48 hours of kickoff. So mm -hmm. they suspended me and a bunch of other people, right? Other than that, nothing. I bawled my eyes out when I graduated, right? When I, get, I walk across, get that the, the thing that day, everybody, gowns, I was t crying because it's over. Right. right. I was devastated. Yeah. I love that. So... I go home. We have very similar stories. <laughs> <laughs> we really do. I go home and everything's like blah, right? Yeah. It's just like blah, boring. Mm -hmm. um, so back with my old friends, right? Smoking weed, drinking, doing all these things. Just college continued, but at home. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, you know, I get a job in downtown Boston. And so like, here's where the ego comes into play, right? So like, I have this already 
underlying like insecurity and fear inside of me mm -hmm. um and i'm doing nothing to fix it i'm just like skating by whatever right add in this sense of like purpose ego that i get because i get to wear a suit to work mm -hmm. right like that's all that's it i get to tell people i work in boston i wear a suit my job anybody could have done mm -hmm. it wasn't important but i this thing right so now i'm insecure i think everybody's talking about me i'm not as good as anybody but i also have this ego that i think i'm the man mm -hmm. right it's a weird combination that was just it was an absolute circus in my head but when i go out it's all gone mm -hmm. right it's like i'm out so go to work go out go to sleep go to work go out go to sleep. like that was it just constant right work hard play hard and i was like this is it i found it this is life right i can do this mm -hmm. so um like ecstasy molly cocaine all these drugs played a big part i'm still smoking weed and drinking all these things and like eventually what happened is right i had encountered some form of opiates painkillers right i got hurt in soccer they gave me some i got my wisdom teeth out they gave me some of these mm -hmm. things right i liked it mm -hmm. did i think i was gonna you know aha uh -huh, no mm -hmm. but that moment came at work right on the 20th something floor in boston when I did an opiate and I realized I could work better on, right? I'm mm -hmm. at work doing it. Mm -hmm. Now I found what I was looking for, something I can do at work. Mm -hmm. Can't really do cocaine or ecstasy at work. People will know, right? Mm -hmm. So this, I think I can hide it. I yeah. like it. So work flies by. So that was it. That was my You're like in a better employee. You're I'm like, like this is feeling it. good. I just have to do this every day mm -hmm. and I'll be fine. Mm -hmm. And I'll, all that. So for a while it was okay right right and there's other people at work doing it too so it's okay right I'm, you know i'm not as bad as him i'm not mm -hmm. as bad as her mm -hmm. whatever it was mm -hmm. eventually as we know progression right mm -hmm. very quickly i go from snorting a couple pills to heroin <laughs> to right. boom boom right so right down the line so now how long did that progression take so it took a couple years, right? I worked, I had money, I had, so like, it took me a while to like, come to terms with like, this is just what we're gonna do, right? The first time I get sick, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't even know what that was at the moment. Right. The first time I get in withdrawal and dope sick, I'm like, well, we're just not doing this again, right? right. We're just gonna avoid this, so boom. So I made sure I had them all the time. Mm -hmm. That's expensive. Yeah. They kept getting more expensive, right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, now I'm no longer as good of an employee. I no longer show up all the time. Mm -hmm. I no longer am there at all these stuff because my life revolves around this. Mm -hmm. I am full blown drug addict and I have no clue. Mm -hmm. And I get sick. Like I said, I don't want to get sick ever again. Perfect solution. Make just, sure I have just them. Do less and monitor it, right? Mm -hmm. Just manage opiate addiction. Yeah perfect right mm -hmm. that lasted like six minutes right mm -hmm. <laughs> and so what it turns into is like i'm running out of money the pills are no longer around heroin mm -hmm. right and again same thought perfect this is cheap i'll be fine mm -hmm. i'll just do this right the problem was i really liked it mm. and i wanted to do more all the time mm. more 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 so and i had to keep up appearances because i couldn't tell anybody i was a drug addict like god forbid right like right. no so for about five to seven years right this is me in full-blown heroin addiction mm -hmm. it was an absolute nightmare and not so much a nightmare like yeah i got arrested yeah i had some consequences right lost jobs money family hated me right in and out of rehab detoxes non-stop but like so that's not what it looked like what those things that you just mentioned oh yeah that's what it looked like oh, that okay. happened to me but it was the like internal right. condition right that's what so what happened was I couldn't do it, mm -hmm. right? I couldn't manage this thing and my ego, right? Mm -hmm. So you have the fear of people knowing, mm -hmm. right? You have the ego, which is the same exact thing. I don't want people to know. Mm -hmm. So both of these things that have like crippled me in my normal life before this, where I couldn't be myself is now crippling me from getting help. Mm -hmm. And I got to a point where like I, where I grew up, right? All this stuff, right? And you took me, I'm living in my car as an IV drug user, right? Like mm -hmm. that's where I wound up. Right. Everybody's got a different bottom. Pain is relative to mm -hmm. everybody's situation. That's mm -hmm. what I was told in treatment once mm -hmm. because I would always think to myself, like, I'm not as mm -hmm. 
like I had opportunity, this person didn't, right. and I would like feel guilty or shame. Mm -hmm. But it's like pain's relative, right? Right. So um, I threw everything away. Like there were expectations, all this stuff, right? Um, so the internal pain hurt more than the exterior things mm -hmm. losing, right? I could lose those things no problem as long as I was high, mm -hmm. right? Like that's all that mattered. So right. eventually, after all these rehabs, getting arrested, um, I know I can't do it anymore, right? I can't like, now I can concede to the fact I'm an alcoholic and a drug addict. Because mm -hmm. I would always just, I'm just going to drink, right? I'm just going to be a recreational IV heroin oh, yeah. user, right? Because that's the thing. But yeah, all these things. <laughs> right. right. Um, ultimately, what this comes to is me, again, having to go get help, right? Mm -hmm. And I go, I get introduced to the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous with mm -hmm. a sponsor, AA, 12 steps, mm -hmm. and I got genuine relief. I did this. Did I do it to the best of my ability, mm -hmm. honesty and thorough? No, mm -hmm. but I got some relief right. to the point where I then went on to sober living for the first time. And I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, this is cool, blah, 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 right? But I got on Tinder. I got a date. Mm -hmm. I went out and drank with that date. I got kicked out of my sober house and like, like that, there right? There it goes, right. Gone. Mm -hmm. And all because, I, again, I was insecure. I, I needed something to like fill a void, mm -hmm. value. So here's all the experiences where I'm learning it. Meanwhile, you have people telling me all this stuff, but I knew better than you, right? Mm -hmm. Again, that ego, insecurity, fear, I can do it. I don't need, so I needed to like hit pain, pain, right? right. And the runs got shorter. Mm -hmm. My time in between rehab got shorter, mm -hmm. but I put some like decent time of sobriety together. Mm -hmm. Was I being honest? No. Was mm -hmm. I helping other people? No. Was I miserable? Yeah, mm -hmm. right? But I was sober, so that counts, right? It's good. <laughs> it sucked, right? So I got to a place, basically, um, it was like 10 or 11 months sober, give or take. I don't really know. Um, and I couldn't sleep, right? I was in that obsession, they say, right? All mm -hmm. I could think about was either not getting high or getting high. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. So after the third night of being up all night, just... I was out right before I knew it. I was out the door, 2 a.m., gone, high, homeless again, right? Mm. Now, very quickly after that, I knew what this was. I've been through this. It's been seven plus years of this, right? I mm -hmm. know I'm going to tear my life down. Mm -hmm. I concede to that. I go take out every dollar I have. I cash out the 401k I had, like everything, right? And I'm like, I'm going to spend this and go, and that's it. So I got, so before I could do that, right, <laughs> you know, I went, I could hear these people in the program of AA in mm. my head. I could hear the sponsors. I could hear them all telling me and I couldn't even enjoy this last mm. run. I couldn't even enjoy it, right? Mm. I'm sitting there like when I'm high, I'm miserable. Mm -hmm. When I'm sober, I'm miserable. I have drugs in front the of drugs me. The stop working. I'm crying yeah. on them. Drugs aren't working. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, what do I do? Mm -hmm. Just don't wake up. It's all I wanted to do. I just, mm -hmm. every night, I didn't want to wake up. But in the same way, every night before I went to bed, this is the last time I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to do this anymore. Lie detector test, I'll pass. Right. I meant it. Mm -hmm. And every morning I wake up and the first thing that happens without even thinking, mm -hmm. it's not a trigger. My mm -hmm. eyes opened, mm -hmm. right? I'm a drug addict. This is what I know. This is what I do. Mm -hmm. So I made that phone call to somebody, right? After the money ran out, all that, I walked to detox. Nobody would drive me, mm -hmm. right? And I wound up in New Hampshire, right? Two and a half years ago or so and sober living stayed for a while started managing the house all these things but here's the component that changed mm -hmm. i was willing to listen to just shut up get out of the way do what i was told take direction and i was willing to get honest mm -hmm. right so like honest for me had to go deeper mm -hmm. my intentions my motives behind mm -hmm. things and like the way this started coming out, I'm like, what? Like, I can't, I don't even know what this is, right? I've never done this. Mm -hmm. My life was on the surface. I didn't, so like therapy, it worked, but it didn't in treatment, right? Um, medications worked, but they didn't in, you know, mm -hmm. treatment served its purpose, right? Mm -hmm. I was removed from drugs and alcohol right. to the point where I could recover mm -hmm. or give myself a shot, right? That's what it did. And I needed that. Mm -hmm. And then I get out. And I heard some truth from people, mm -hmm. right? Like, you're nobody, man. You're just another bozo, right? Like, nobody cares mm -hmm. about you. Right. <laughs> nobody does, right. right? Just shut up. 
I went to a lot of meetings. I got a sponsor. I got a home group. I went through the steps. Mm -hmm. I wrote a four. Like I did all these things I was told to do by somebody who had what I wanted. Mm -hmm. I met this person. I saw them. They looked okay. Mm -hmm. I wanted what they had. Right. Show me what you did. Right. They did. I did it. Right. Then it's like, okay, my experience that they talk about in the book, right? Mm -hmm. My experience was in amends, right? So, mm -hmm. and it was with um, parents, sister, right? Mm -hmm. That's where it was, where it was like, again, hit with truth that hurt. Mm -hmm. It hurt, right? I have a conscience. I do. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to hurt these people, but I don't have a choice mm -hmm. when I'm in active addiction. So I go there and, um, you know, they tell me straight up, like, I'll never forgive you for this. I can never do that. And it's like, that hurts, mm. right? And then the stuff you don't realize, right? That like, I I have three kids and I'm up thinking about my 25 year old brother mm. at night and I'm like, right? I, I have this and I'm thinking about you, mm -hmm. right? Um, coming to check to make sure you're alive. Mm -hmm. You know, like right. these kind of things that I didn't realize, right? The, the mm -hmm. how far and deep it went. Mm -hmm. And so that hurt again, right? But this is when I knew it was gonna be okay. I left there, my, right, South Shore, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. I drove back to Manchester, New Hampshire, and I was surrounded in my sober house by a bunch of guys, and it was just, I didn't think about it. I was miserable in that whole car ride. I probably smoked a pack of Newports, right, mm -hmm. freaking out. Mm -hmm. Didn't know what to do. Just get there, right? Just get there. Don't stop right. anywhere. Right. And these guys helped me, right? Mm -hmm. Whether they had more time, less time, didn't matter. They were just somebody there that could be like, I know, it sucks, right? There was somebody there. I did it. And, yeah. and that right there, I didn't think about that amends. Mm -hmm. The rest of that night, the next day I woke up and I was like, wow, like I'm okay. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was when it hit, right? Mm -hmm. And now, boom, you're right in the sponsorship, mm -hmm. all this other stuff. So look, my life today is very simple. And it's amazing. I never knew that this is all I wanted. It was just easy, mm. simple, right? Mm -hmm. My home group is at 6.30 in the morning. That's when I go First to it, right? Day. What? First light of day. Now it's primary purpose group because oh, of COVID. Okay. But yeah, same people. Okay. Right. Yep. And I go there, right? There's meetings at a sober house. Mm -hmm. There's helping others. There's sponsorship. Um, continue to do these things. Mm -hmm. Because... I like my life. Because mm -hmm. right? it works. Yeah. So like, I'm okay every mm -hmm. day. I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Is everything perfect? No. Mm -hmm. But it's a lot less of like, you know, the circus again is gone. That's right. it. Right. And one thing yeah. I would say is like, I used to be sitting in my room or in the shower and I'm winning arguments from like five years ago. Right. Like I'm remembering these things because this is going. And then like, I'm playing out in the future if i see like this is what i'm gonna say oh it's gonna be so right <laughs> so nuts just nuts um but yeah look i went from somebody who couldn't put two seconds of sobriety together mm -hmm. who like genuinely gave up surrendered got out of the way i didn't it's it's nothing crazy right but mm -hmm. i had to that was my path mm -hmm. unfortunately it took a lot longer to get there but like mm -hmm glass half full makes you more grateful for what you have mm -hmm. who knows but now it's just like show up family i can show up uh, friends you know um the meeting commitments right stuff like this like mm -hmm. i i can do these things um and it it feels good mm -hmm. right um my motives aren't selfish all the time anymore mm -hmm. i'm not perfect they still are sometimes right <laughs> but like <laughs> right. i got you not all the time <laughs> right all right um i try to be selfless mm -hmm. i try to get out of the way i try to walk through these fears get mm -hmm. uncomfortable like they say mm -hmm. make amends mm -hmm. um there's a lot of different things that i could do better every single day and i try to mm -hmm. um do i always know do i make mistakes of course i do and mm -hmm. like here's the thing right when I make those mistakes, I do the best I can to fix it. And like, if it's accepted, cool. If it's not, I don't sit there like bugging mm -hmm. out what that person's going to think of mm -hmm. me. Right. I did the best I could. Mm -hmm. You know, I still act out. Right. Impulse, that whole pause when agitated. Mm -hmm. I, I should, I try, but mm -hmm. again, it's hard. Yeah. Um, so yeah, look, I, I just did what I was told, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody held my hand like a small child, mm -hmm. legitimately, walked me through this, do this, do this, right? And 
I started getting relief. I wanted more. Mm -hmm. I, I hung around with people doing the right thing. That was huge. So tell us, we have like a couple of minutes left. Yeah. Tell us like today, what does it look like? Do you go, what's your program look like? Yeah. So today I go to that home group, right? I work. Every day? No, it's okay. seven days a week, right? Right, so right, right. So I just curious how three days a week, maybe okay. more, sometimes less. Mm -hmm. um, there's other meetings here or there, commitments through that group, mm -hmm. stuff like that that you do, try and stay involved. Mm -hmm. um, I work in treatment. I try and completely separate those two things because it's, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah. Um, but like recovery wise, I have the fellowship piece is huge, mm -hmm. right? like-minded people hanging out with them we have fun meetings i have a sponsor i have sponsees mm -hmm. and my sponsor knows like he's my sponsor right mm -hmm. the thing people say right. um <laughs> i i have good relationships with people at those meetings mm -hmm. i i built a connection yep. that made me want to go there mm -hmm. i get something out of it mm -hmm. um i pray mm -hmm. i meditate mm -hmm. to the best of my ability when i can right um but the things that I have come to realize is like, I just try and I don't do it perfectly, right? To not like cause harm and be honest. Mm. I, I like those two things, mm. usually I can manage my day pretty well or my day goes pretty well, mm -hmm. right? Um, and again, the fact is doing these things, I've gone a pretty decent while without doing drugs or drinking. So mm -hmm. like, I, I, it's working. So you're going to keep doing I'm it. I'm going to keep doing it. Right? right. Daily reprieve. Right. It's like, day. oh, maybe I could stay sober if I didn't go to meetings and work a program. Right. But like, why would I not? My life is great and it's working. Yeah, so like, it, why take that risk? And I right? was that guy. Right. That I was miserable. Right. I, that was it. Right. I tried it that way. Mm -hmm. It sucked. It doesn't work. No, it didn't work. I mean, it can work for a period of time, but you're not happy, and then it all comes to an end. So. No, happy, joyous, and free, right? I yeah. had no idea what free was. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the word, I think, of freedom from mm -hmm. this, from, like, everything. Mm. It's just, like, it's going to be all right. Um, for me, one of the things, too, was, well, you said honesty, and, like, I struggled with shame, like, a lot. Yeah. And today, like, my ability to get honest and like just realize that like I'm not just like this like unstoppable monster. Like I'm a human. Right. And like I make mistakes. And if I own those mistakes, majority of the time, whoever I'm talking to is like, dude, me too. You know what I mean? Right. And no, it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. really a freeing feeling to have somebody say that they identify with what you're going through. Um, you know, so like getting honest to for me was was definitely a it's game hard. changer. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah, but it works. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So we're running out of time. Um, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. And um, it was a pleasure talking to you. Pleasure. So. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, everyone, for watching. And we will see you next time. Have a great evening. program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.